friends! Today is gonna be a reading vlog. I know what you're thinking. Jessica is terrible with reading vlogs, and you're not wrong. But this is one that I'm really excited about and I really wanted to do for you guys for December. And uh, basically, this is going to be a blind date with a book reading blog. So our lovely friend Brianna at Four Pauls and a Book is doing an Etsy shop with blind dates with a book. She recently announced it on her channel and I'll link that in the description box down below for you as well as the Etsy store if you're interested in trying it out. And essentially what she's doing is she is providing you a blind date with a book based off of kind of what you're looking for and what you have already on your shelves. And she's kind of doing this as a way to help fund a little bit of her wedding because she was recently engaged. And I was like, absolutely, A, must support Brianna. B, love the idea of blind date with a book. C, have never bought one before. So I was like, let's see what happens. Uh, I got my package today. I took off like the shipping packaging. This is the exterior packaging. Uh, I have no idea when I'm actually going to get to read this. I don't even know what day this video is going to go up, but I want to open it. So we need to film that part of it. Yes. First, we have a card with a little, with, with a little truck, Christmas truck. Uh, basically what I told Brianna I was looking for was I'm trying to get more into mystery thriller genre and adult. I've been reading more of them, but I still have a lot to go before I would really consider myself knowing what I like in the genre. And so um, this card just says, thank you for your order. This is a great introduction to the thriller genre. For fans of law and order and true crime, which I love, this dives into the hidden secrets of a well-known case. It seems like an open and shut case, but nothing is as it seems. Check the trigger warnings for this. It does tackle some serious and sensitive issues. So, okay, we'll be doing that, definitely. So not only is it wrapped in this tissue paper, but it is also wrapped again. And it also comes with a bookmark and a tea to try. So we will definitely be drinking our tea, which is white peach tea. Mellow white tea with round summer peach flavor. Okay. So we'll be having a peach tea with our book when we are reading our book, which again, don't know what day that will be, but eventually we'll get there. And a little bookmark that looks like it's part of a postcard. And again, it's all wrapped up, all nice and neat and pretty with some stickers and some string. And we're going to open it and see what's inside. Maybe being very careful with the packaging. It is wrapped very well like some good folds Brianna some good folds Ooh. okay our book is The Night Swim by Megan Golden see a true crime podcast host covering a controversial trial finds herself drawn deep into a small town's dark past and a brutal crime that took place there years before all right so um, this is a book of the month book. Uh, Brianna has said that some will be like books from her own shelves, some will be things that she um, picks up in good condition at thrift stores, things like that. So it's going to not be like a brand new book that she purchases for you specifically, but um, things that she has, things that she is passing on. I do currently have a book of the month account, um, but this is not one that I've seen on there, which it's from August 2020. Book of the month has literally been where I've been getting my adult thrillers from. <laughs> this kind of is on point with what I've been getting and what I've been enjoying. So we're going to be reading The Night Swim by Megan Golden and I will look up the trigger warnings for this and let you know what those are as well um, before we start reading. Um, but again I don't know when that's going to be so I will see you guys whenever the reading time starts. Did I film a vlog for this book? No, no I did not because we all know that I suck at vlogging. But the question is did I read the book? And the answer is yes. The other question is, did I like the book? And the answer to that question is, fuck yes. The thing I want to highlight here is that I love this book. I gave it a 4.5, which means it got a 5, but a 4.5 out of 5 stars. 
and the fact that I loved this so much and gave Brianna so little information to go off of is fan-fucking-tastic. This has one of like my favorite plot devices in a mystery novel and that is a dual timeline. So we get technically three perspectives in this book. We get the past in Hannah and everything that we get from her is in letter format to our main character of present day which is 25 years later and that is Rachel and Rachel has a podcast and our third perspective is Rachel's podcast. I highly recommend the audiobook of this book if you have the opportunity to listen to it. Um, did I drink my peach tea? No because I lost it and I just found it inside the book. <laughs> I looked for it for like a half hour the other day and could not find it. It was inside the book. We're not going to talk about that. Okay, anyway, let's talk about this book. Okay, I do want to say that this book does have some heavy content warnings. It deals with some things like at a smaller level like domestic abuse, cancer, death of a parent, um, death of a sibling, obviously, because the whole plot line revolves around Hannah's sister dying when she was younger. The thing that this is really heavy on is sexual assault and violence against women. And the other word that we can't say on YouTube. This present day case that Rachel is covering in the book is a sexual assault case where a girl was at a party and was taken to a beach and multiple times had forced sex upon her without her consent, supposedly. Because, you know, innocent until proven guilty and all of those things. Rachel's in this town to cover on her podcast this trial. The male is like this big sports star and people love him and they think he's fantastic, but he's lost all of his opportunities to train, to do national competition, to have the possibility of being in the Olympics and all of these things and the townspeople it's a very small insulated town and insulated town insular town let's go with that anyway um so like half the townspeople are totally against him and half the town are totally against everyone else for like taking this opportunity away from him the way that was all handled was absolutely fantastic when rachel gets there she starts getting these letters from hannah whose sister died 25 years previously. The police basically said that it was drowning. She was out swimming and she hit her head and she died. And Hannah's like, actually, no, she was murdered. And the interesting thing is that the town's basically going off of, well, there's no evidence because Hannah never said anything when she was little about what she had seen that day. And since then, no one has taken her word for what she had seen. So we're getting the tale of what led up to her sister's death while also getting the tale of what happened to this girl in modern times and just this whole thing. It was fantastic. I had a great time. And by I had a great time, I mean I was absolutely livid and pissed and disgusted and just like screaming at the top of my lungs at the audiobook and at the book when I was reading the book physically for a little while. Um, yeah, just like absolutely so fucking angry. And it's, n I, I don't wanna say it's not hard to make me feel that way when you're discussing the topics that you're discussing, cause it's definitely an easy jump, but I think it was done so well. And I think it kind of gives you this viewpoint of smaller towns. It really does read more like true crime than like a fiction, but that's why I'm here for it because I love true crime. There are some things that start to happen as you get later on in the book. If you haven't read the synopsis of this, I highly recommend you don't uh, because there's some things that happen that are in the synopsis and I would have preferred not to know. I would have preferred to like put those breadcrumbs together myself, but it was... It was fantastic. So I guess what I'm saying is that somehow Brianna off of the very small information that I gave her that was basically like, I just want some adult mystery thrillers. I'm trying to get into those. Here's my list of ones that I've read recently. And she was like, okay, whatever her brain did, I don't know. And somehow she magicked me out this book and it was fantastic. That's where I'm going with that. It's been a while since I filmed the opening clip. So 
I will definitely link Brianna and her Etsy shop down below if you're interested in picking up a blind date with a book for yourself. I'm gonna take this tea out of here so I don't forget it in there forever and I will drink it later because I'm stupid. So let me know in the comments below if you have ever done a blind date with a book and how that went for you. If you did one like from the library or from a bookstore or from a friend let me know if you have a video on it I would love to check that out because this was super fun again I know I was supposed to vlog it and I know I suck at vlogging and we all know I suck at vlogging but when I'm doing the majority of it in the mornings when I'm getting ready for work that's not very interesting also I'm getting ready for work and I'm exhausted and I don't want to film then because I feel like absolute piles of dog poo so yay that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!